In this video, we'll solve some problems involving logarithms and apply properties of logarithms. You can find these properties in pretty much any textbook. You could do a Google image search and just have um, a tab on your computer open to keep referring to these properties as you're solving the problem. And the more we refer to the properties, the more likely we are to memorize them. We'll start with this slide. Use the properties of logarithms to find the exact value of each expression, and we're told to not use a calculator. So what we can do for this first example, log to the base 3 of 3 to the 71. We can set that expression equal to x. Now we can observe that we have a typical logarithmic structure here. So we could rewrite this logarithmic statement as an exponential statement. 3 to the x power equals 3 to the 71. Let's notice that our bases are equal. Therefore, our exponents will be equal. And now I have solved the problem. The value of log to the base 3 of 3 to the 71 equals 71. So when you stop and, and take a look at that answer, you can notice that, in a sense, when we have notation that looks like this, that that kind of all goes away and your answer is going to be the 71. Let's look at the next example. We'll rewrite the ln as, or the natural log, as log to the base e. We'll observe our logarithmic structure and we'll rewrite this as an exponential equation, e to the x equals e to the negative 4. Because our bases are equal, then our exponents will also be equal. So ln of e to the negative 4 equals negative 4. And take a look at the way the expression was given to us in a way that the ln and the e kind of cancel out and you're left with negative 4. So same thing is going to hold true when we have n raised to the power of log to the base n. These, this part of the expression will kind of go away and we're left with 7 equals x. In this last example, it's a good idea to refer back to our properties because we see here that we can apply the first property but kind of backwards. The log of a product equals the sum of the logs. Here we have sum of the log to the base 8 of 2 plus log to the base 8 of 4. So what we can do is write this as a single logarithmic expression, log to the base 8 of 2 times 4. So that's log to the base 8 of 8. And I could solve this a couple of ways. What I'll notice is I have a logarithmic structure here, so I can write my corresponding exponential equation. I can now rewrite the 8 that's on the right-hand side as 8 to the first, and therefore x equals 1 is the solution to that equation that I had written. Therefore, the value of this expression equals 1. Now let's use properties of logarithms to write each logarithm in terms of a and b, where the ln of 2, the natural log of 2, is defined as a, and the ln of 3 is defined as b. Here are our properties that we'll be referring to. What we can do for the number 6 is you want to think, how can I represent 6 in terms of 2 and 3? Well, I can write 6 as 2 times 3. Now I can apply the first property, that the log, in this case the natural log, of a product is equal to the sum of the natural logs. Now I was given that natural log of 2 is a, 
and the natural log of 3 is b, so I have solved the first problem. Now in the second problem, how can I write 1.5 using some combination of the numbers 2 and 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. That doesn't work. 2 plus 3 is 5. Nope. 2 minus 3. Nope. 2 divided by 3 doesn't work, but 3 divided by 2 does work. Right? 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So now I can apply the second logarithmic property that the log of a quotient is equal to the difference of the logs. And I've been given the natural log of 3 being b, natural log of 2 being a, so my answer here is b minus a. To solve the next problem, the natural log of 8, again, how can I use the numbers 2 and 3 to get 8? Well, I know 2 to the third power is 8. So I will be using that bottom property, that the log of a power equals the product of the power and the log. Take a look at the way that property looks, and then we'll apply it. So we're going to represent this problem as the natural log of 2 to the third. And I'll apply that property that I can bring that exponent out front. I know that the natural log of 2 was given as b, so my answer is 3b. Right now, in the next example, I want to remember that when I am taking the fifth root of something, that's the same thing as raising to the one-fifth power. When I have a power with logarithms, I want to bring that power out in front. So I have one-fifth times the natural log of six. Now, I already had an expression for the natural log of six. It was my first example. And I'll just go through the steps of what I had done there. Remembering that one-fifth is really being multiplied to this log, uh, this uh, product. Therefore, I have to distribute one-fifth to natural log of two plus natural log of three. My final answer looks like this. I also could have represented it as one-fifth A plus one-fifth B. All right, now a couple more examples. Let's use the properties of logarithms to write each expression as a sum and or difference of logarithms. So in the first example, it's the logarithm of a product which will equal the sum of the logs, in this case, natural log. The natural log of e is 1. That's an important thing to remember. And so my final answer here is 1 plus natural log of x. In the second example, we have ln of x. We're going to apply the quotient property. So ln of x minus ln or natural log of e to the x. That's ln of x minus x. That's the best we can do there. Now we'll look at the next one. This is really quite complicated, isn't it? We want to first apply the quotient property by writing this as the difference of logarithms. Now what we have is an exponent on that second expression, which we want to bring that power of 2 out in front of the log. Now my first expression, I have the log of a product, so I can represent that as the log of the sum so um, of x plus log of x plus 2. And I've done all I can do here, so we no longer need the brackets. Here's my final answer for this problem. Okay, lots to do here. Last slide, we are given log an expression where there's a sum and it's log to the same base. <clears throat> so the property that we'll apply in this example will ultimately be <clears throat> the log of a product equals the sum of the logs. <clears throat> but first, we'll notice that 3, which is out in front of the log, has to come up as our exponent. Same thing with the 4 in the second expression. Now that we've done that, we can apply the log of a product property. When we're done, we've solved that problem. We've 
satisfy the directions. In the next example, let's start by taking the 5 that is out in front of the log and bring it up as an exponent. Now let's consider representing this expression with a single log and a quotient. And we're going to notice here, before we assume our work is done, that the numerator can be factored into x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now the, there's a factor of x plus 1 that could cancel out of both numerator and denominator. So my final answer is going to look like this, log to the base 4 of x minus 1 over x plus 1 quantity to the fourth power.